I, th I think Germany will be the last country to leave the Eurozone, but uh, everything is possible. Uh, I, my my uh, expectation, though, is that uh, the Eurozone uh, will have a future, will survive, uh, but maybe not with all countries. very difficult to say how the Eurozone uh, develops. Uh, it's clear that currently we have very big problems uh, of, for which uh, no real solution is on the table. The main problem being um, the divergence of price levels. Some countries have to be, become cheaper uh, to be competitive. They um, inflated a lot when the Euro was introduced because uh, uh, credit was uh, available at low rates of interest, a bubble developed and the bubble was driving the goods prices and the wages way above the sustainable long-term equilibrium. And now uh, wages and prices have to come down. In uh, Greece one talks of 30 percent price cut, maybe more. In order to be on the Turkish price level, they have to come down by 37%. Uh, the same in Portugal, 35% according to Goldman Sachs. For Spain, it's uh, easier, 20%, but also for France, 20%. So we have a realignment need in the Eurozone, uh, but no one really knows how this realignment could easily take place. Uh, the, the most favorable outlook, I can imagine, is a period of slump of a decade or so for uh, some of the countries which are too expensive. Because only through a slump did, do you get a wage and price restraint so that gradually by waiting for the others to inflate away you can increase your competitiveness. This is what Germany did when the euro was introduced. Uh, Germany went through a long period of slump and it uh, depreciated, devalued uh, internally. Uh, by 22 percent relative to the trading partners in the Eurozone. Uh, that is the order of magnitude which we expect from France and uh, from Spain. So it's manageable, but uh, for Greece and Portugal I have my doubts. You have a lot of uh, critics on uh, the Target 2 system. Uh, you stated that uh, already the claim of Germany is over uh, 600 billion euros. Um, how can we solve this? And the claim of uh, the Netherlands is, uh, I, I think, in the order of 150, 60 billion. So uh, this is a huge number uh, for the Netherlands, even bigger relative uh, to GDP than for Germany. Uh, in Europe, we have a system where you can just uh, notice the numbers and the numbers increase, increase. You can never call them due. There is a claim which you cannot call due. It has a rate of interest of 1%, uh, which is not even the inflation rate. And uh, that means that some countries export to other countries without receiving anything but um, these uh, curious claims. The Netherlands, for example, in the last four years had a uh, good export surplus. Usually for an export surplus you get assets abroad in other countries, uh, either um, um, company shares or bonds or you buy real estate, whatever, but not in the case of Netherlands. The Netherlands just received money printed elsewhere in the Eurozone and uh, therefore a claim against the ECB system, the target claim. Uh, unknowingly, the wealth of uh, the Dutch savers, uh, which they thought is well invested in a diversified portfolio, has been converted to a considerable ex extent to uh, 150, 60 billion euros into such mere claims of the Dutch banking sector against the Dutch central bank. And the Dutch central bank has this claim against the ECB system. It, again, this claim cannot be called due. It is a risky strategy for the Dutch savers.